Hey BookTube, how's it going? Um, for those of you who saw my um, horrible attempt at a live stream at midnight, um, I apologize. Uh, we just didn't have the power here to make me be able to do that. <clears throat> so the live streaming might be the way of the buffalo for right now. But um, <clears throat> I went ahead and I got about 900 words done last night. And um, so far today, I'm at 2159. So I'm doing a little better um, than normal. I'm going to try to get some more in. But I'm also wanting to not let booktube slide. Um, I have noticed that when I get something going, when I get a bee in my bonnet, um, I tend to slack on doing what I'm supposed to do here. So um, I'm going to try not to do that. And I'm going to try to go back to like some sort of schedule. Um, it would really help me to just do that to read what I'm supposed to be reading and whatnot. Um, so, until I can figure that out, this is going to be my Friday reads slash um, weekly uh, wrap up, I guess. I was going to do two different videos for it, but um, I just don't know when to put them up. So I got to figure out, I think Friday reads will happen on Fridays, um, or weekend reads or whatever. See, and that's another thing, like, is weekend reads or Friday reads better? I just don't know. <clears throat> so I think I actually deleted it from here. Um, but let me see if I still have it on here. Um, I'll start with what I've read. Um. And something tells me that it's not here anymore. Oh, wait, no, it is. Okay. Um, let me get back to... Nope. Wow, this is a pretty interesting video, huh, guys? Yeah. Oh, is it not going to show me the cover? Come on, ebook. Do your job. Oh, here we go. So, the first one I read was The Executioner of War Against the Mafia <clears throat> by um, Don Pendleton. Um, I was really actually excited to look into this. I, um, again, that great podcast, um, Paperback Warrior, did a little spotlight on the Executioner books, and I couldn't find the first one when I was digging around, but I remember I had this from way back when, I can't remember where I got it, um, but, uh, so, War Against the Mafia, Mac Bolin, Vietnam War hero, launches a bloody one-man crusade against the most powerful gangster force in the history of the USA. <clears throat> Now, in reading this book, all it made me want was to read a quarry book um, by Max Allen Collins. The Executioner, like basically, he goes to Vietnam and comes back because while he was gone, his dad, for some reason, um, killed his mom and his sister and then killed himself and critically wounded um, the son. So he came back to like bury his family and found out that the dad owed money to the mob um, and then decides he's going to like infiltrate the mob and take him out. And it's good, <clears throat> but as of right now, and I mean, this series went on for like a gajillion books like in the 200s I think um, 
And I think the first 30, with the exception of book 16, was written by Don Pendleton. But, like, Quarry is just such a better character, in my opinion. So, I don't know if I'm going to just finish the Quarry books, because I have, like, four left in that series. So I might just finish those before... Um, jumping into the Executioner. Because, it like, the whole time I was just like, man, I wish I was reading a quarry book right now. Uh, they're just paced a little differently. So that's that. Um, maybe I should run over to Goodreads real quick. And just see what else I read. I was doing, like, review videos and stuff. <clears throat> and, um... That's all good and stuff, but... Um, people don't like review videos for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's because they're just like, well, that book doesn't sound interesting. But when I do it like this, I trick you guys into like coming in here, and then I got gotcha. you. You can't go nowhere. Um, actually, let me give that a that. All right. Um, let's see here. What have I read? <clears throat> I'm on my Goodreads right now. If you haven't found me on Goodreads yet. There's something wrong with you. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I talked about all those. So now I just have to talk about these two. So, um, we'll start with this one, actually. <clears throat> the Quest of Kwai, I'm going to guess. So this is Doc Savage, Quest of Kwai. Um, this is book 12, which I got confused because the spine says 6. So I thought it was book 6. But it's actually book 12. And um, so now i got to reorganize all my books um, in this series. Um, and this is the one where I said he was wearing a lady coat. But if you don't know Doc Savage, um, Doc Savage was um, written by Lester Dent. Most of them were written by Lester Dent. Under the house name, uh, Kenneth Robeson. And some others were written under, um, di different authors under Kenneth Robeson as well. Um, this was originally published in Doc Savage Magazine in July 1935. And they started publishing these books in, um, 1966. Um, or at least this book was first printed as a book in 1966. The thing about Doc Savage that's weird is that he has, like, a group of dudes that are all, like, military dudes. It's so funny because, like, for those of you who grew up in the 80s, um, G.I. Joe, the whole deal, um, this right here is just so G.I. Joe. And, I mean, that... Doc Savage really resembles Duke. They just didn't give him that widow's peak, you know? Um, but you got his weird cronies that run around with him, and they're all, like, military slash genius guys. This little dude right there, Monk, he's got a pig, like a big hog that he takes around with him. But anyway, this book was quite weird. Now, for the hero pulp genre i don't actually think it's that far out there but basically you have um these vikings on an ancient viking warship um come up and hijack a yacht and take off in a yacht and then um one of doc savage's homies goes to check out the um dragon ship and realizes that it's, like, legit and, like, an actual old Viking ship. And then, um, he travels north to investigate this further and gets captured by these guys who mean business, you know? Not Vikings, but just dudes, Okay. Now, when Chapter 4 rolls along, Doc Savage finally shows up. I hate when books do that. Like, if you have a character, 
put him in the beginning of the book, man. Um, but he's like hanging out in his like cool Doc Savage office, and um, somebody stabs him in the back with this ancient Viking dagger. But he's got chain mail on under his shirt all the time, so that's okay. Even though in every picture of Doc Savage you see his shirt's all ripped up and there's nothing underneath it. But he always has his chain mail on, according to this book. Um, and basically all of his other homies are getting like beat up by these like invisible forces that they can't figure out who they are or where they came from or whatever, and then through a series of odd clues and um, uh, happenstance, um, Doc Savage and the rest of his buddies and um, this rich airline industrialist and his manservant fly up to the Arctic to try to find um, Johnny or little John, who's been um, missing, because, anyway, the story gets, it doesn't get crazy, see, here's the thing, I think the people who don't give this book a very high review, didn't, or don't read a lot of hero pulps, because, the stuff that happens in this book is on the verge of being ludicrous. And that's the genre. Like, it's supposed to be, like, so far out that it's okay. If you understand what I'm saying. Now, the reason why I always prefer the spider to Doc Savage and the spider to the shadow. Well, this doesn't really have anything to do with the spider and the shadow. But why I prefer um, the spider to Doc Savage is because Doc Savage is, like, the strong and silent type, basically. But his, like, crew of homies are not. And they run their mouths and say all sorts of stuff. And it makes it fun, especially if you're a fan of, like, G.I. Joe comics. Um, that whole team atmosphere and every member of the team has a different specialty kind of thing. And that makes it fun. But you're also stuck with, instead of the narrator telling you how awesome the spider is, you have um, Monk and Ham talking to whoever will listen to them about how awesome Doc Savage is. And it's, I mean, it's like male fantasy at that point, like, to like, man, if I could only be as cool as Doc Savage, I would never have a problem in the world, you know? Um, so I get that. But <clears throat> I think from what I've checked out when people talk about these books, um, it's mainly that the plot seems so out there and never really fixed or touched upon. And I don't think that's the case at all. Because basically you find out that um, there... I don't want, Well, I guess I could ruin it. The book's like 100 years old. Um, there are people who have been living... Um, in these like ice caverns in the Arctic and drinking this mineral water that comes from a spring and the minerals in it have kept them tiny. Like they're really, really short. Um, and when ships come through very rarely, but when they do, um, they capture the people, take their ship and bring it into the ice caverns. And then these people, are given the, like, blessed opportunity to be slaves to these small people. And, um, basically, some of these baddies, um, were trapped by said people and saw that they had all of these, like, ancient riches. And so when they escaped, 
in a Viking ship, they got some of the small people, they convinced them that they could give them power and riches and all this other stuff. So they went with them. And so by the time they got to New York, they were all heavily bearded and looked like they'd been at sea for years, which they might have been because they were slaves for a while. And um, so the little people were running through, um, like screwing up with Doc Savage's stuff and all that, while um, the other, the guys who weren't Vikings looked like Vikings because they were all beat up and whatever looking and bearded and had all of this ancient Viking stuff from Vikings who had been captured by these little people. And then they got um, a nice boat to go back and um, try to steal a bunch of other stuff. So the story does make sense, but like everything I just explained to you, like that was like a paragraph in the entire book. So if you weren't paying attention very closely during that one paragraph, you lost the entire plot of why anyone's doing anything. So, um, I don't know. Um, Doc Savage books are fun. Like, they're fun, quick reads. I read this in one sitting. It, it's just, they're, they're fun. So if you like fun, if if you're a fan of Hero Pulps or you want to know more about Hero Pulps, you could do a lot worse than Doc Savage. But Doc Savage is a lot of fun, especially if you like G.I. Joe. So check those out. Um, and I'll be doing more because I got a stack here. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, then I read the second Flintlock book, um, Gutshot. Man. I have a lot to say about William W. Johnstone and J.A. Johnstone, but I'll try to keep it short and sweet here. Um, I've come to find out that um, since William W. Johnstone's death, J.A. Johnstone, which is his niece, runs the estate, and she hires writers to write books um, using William W. Johnstone as a house name. I get it. Tons of people do that. I just showed you another book that does that. This book was awesome. Um, every Flintlock book I've read so far, which was the first one, which is just called Flintlock. This one, Gut Shot. And um, Hell's Gate, which I think is the fifth one. I think fourth or fifth. <clears throat> awesome. I've loved every single one of them. No exception here. Now, this book, I had to get about um, six chapters in before this really started taking off, but that's okay because the chapters are really short. They're like four or five pages long. Um, but, man, so what this is about, um, there's this town where this school teacher was strangled to death and killed. And they have this guy who they think did it, who was a bank teller. And the whole town wants to just lynch him. And he's going to have a trial. And the lawyer of the kid basically proves that they don't actually have proof that he did it. They just assume that he did it. So by that, they can't hang him. And so the judge is like, well, that's the law, so damn it, I can't hang you even though I want you dead, kind of thing. So the whole town's about to go absolutely crazy. And Flintlock rolls into town. And he's a guy who's worked both sides of the law. Bounty hunter, um, deputy, he's done it all. Okay, um, He's friends with Pinkertons, he's friends with outlaws, the whole thing. The lawyer hires him to basically just keep this kid alive. And, man, it is so exciting. It is so good. And it's just so bam, 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 bam. Just, like, action-packed. Boom, boom, boom. Always something going on. And in this book, the first book, and in Hell's Gate, Flintlock 
is such a good character. He, like, it's just... There, there's just something about the way he speaks. There's something about the respect he has for people that he knows have been hired to come and kill him. He knows everybody. Everybody knows him. And in each one of these books, there's always been these moments where Flintlock and the person who you assume he's going to have to like come to blows with by the end of the book sit down by each other a drink because they both respect one another. And like they're just... You know, how you been? Been okay. That's good. How are things? Things are fine. Um, I'll step around you. You step around me. Can't do that. I've been hired to kill you. All right. Okay. I understand. Well, good luck with that. And um, you have a lovely evening. They're just such good, nice people, these outlaw types. Anyway, um, another cool thing about these books, at least the Flintlock books, he talks to his um, dead grandfather, Barnabas, who you find out in this book, um, Satan has like cursed Barnabas um, to wander the prairies with hell buffalo, like to wrangle hell buffalo. I don't know, but um, it's awesome. Um, O'Hara, the... Um, guy who's half Native American, half Irish, um, shows up in this book, which is awesome because he's also in Hell's Gate, and I hope he's in the next book, but I don't know yet. Um, and another cool thing is that there's all this stuff, like in Hell's Gate, there's this guy who is building a flying machine, and he's nuts. In this book, there's a guy who's building a war machine because Jules Verne um, asked him to do it. So by the end of the century, which would be 1900, which is just a few years away, Jules Verne's going to take this guy and his war machine to the moon to fight all the moonlings and start, um, taking ore out of the moon. It's just, oh, these books are just so good. I've read other William Johnstone books, some of them are pretty good. Some of them are okay. The Flintlock books have been great. So I highly recommend the Flintlock books. But now that we are at our Friday reads, I'm reading the next book in the Flintlock series, which is after Gutshot, which is called Kill or Die. And this is where we're going to get to house names. Because I don't know if the same guy who wrote all the other Flintlock books I like wrote this book because the first chapter of this book is so uncharacteristically Flintlock. He doesn't sound like Flintlock. He doesn't do anything like Flintlock. And um, he walks into a world of trouble because he's not being like Flintlock. So I don't know if that's just like a plot point that's going to be in this story. Um, but, and these covers are awful. I, I mean, I'm not telling any fibs here, you know. Um, but, so I'm going to read this this weekend. And I'm really hoping that, that this um, gets better. Because I'm a little bummed out right now, to be honest with you. And then I think if I could finish this today, um, I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this one. I was just going to pick this up and read a story out of it every week. Um... But I have a lot of books I want to get to, and this is in my TBR pile, and it's bothering me. So maybe I'll finish this up, and then I'll um, finish this up. But yeah, so the first chapter of this, it was cool, but it wasn't Flintlock. So that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem, people. So let me know what you're reading down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what you think of them, if you have. Um... If you've read Hero Pulps, let me know what your thoughts are on Doc Savage. Um, if you've read any other John Stone books, let me know your thoughts on those. Like, are there any ones that are better than others? And do you know of a place online that has who wrote what? Because I know there's um, a non-disclosure agreement that people have to sign to work for John Stone. So, um, I don't know if that information's been out yet. So um, let me know. So anyway, guys, we'll see you later.